Patrick Jackson is an IT specialist, predominantly in the area of reverse engineering. Over the years, he has used the same thought process on the paranormal phenomena. His findings have been defined as groundbreaking and said to be the biggest leap in paranormal research in over two centuries. The analysis directly identifies the root cause of global poltergeist activity, models how it operates and reasons behind it, backed up with hard data explaining behaviors and physical effects. His newly released book titled Quantum Paranormal, a 21st century analysis of the paranormal phenomena, is widely recognized to be the only paranormal book in the world that technical specialists agree with. This is the first time Patrick and I sat down and had a chat. And some of the research he's done has been groundbreaking. Being an IT specialist myself, it's interesting to see how he correlates all of his findings and uses the same mindset to derive his conclusions. I think you're going to really enjoy this. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Not bad, thanks. Just, uh, you know, plodding along. (laughs) Just uh, doing my thing, telling everyone about the stuff. And it's getting out there slowly. Um, And more and more people are seeing it now. Uh, so it's, I mean, even yesterday I got like a, an email, a, a friend of mine wasn't a friend. It was just like an out of the blue message from Facebook. What are these, you know, and your guy's got a video of these things off the East coast of, um, the U S yeah. So he's now joined the group and gone, you know, holy shit. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's how it's, it's going. So, uh, yeah, it's going good. Oh, that's great, man. Like, um, so, you know, yeah. I, I I think we found each other on Twitter, obviously, and um, you know, mm-hmm. basically the this these orbs. Um, I'm going to try to pull some of them up. You think Facebook's probably the best? Uh, the most? yeah, just just look at my group. There's loads of them. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I, um. So, how about you just give me a little background of like how the hell you got into this? <laughs> well, um. So uh, I grew up um, in like a little village in Cambridge and uh, in UK. And it was, um, I suppose you want to call it like a UFO hotspot. Okay. It, it wasn't. It wasn't like you were seeing like big crafts flying over, but you see, you see lots of these little like balls of light. Okay. Um, going up, and I used to see them walk, when I was walking home, like every Friday night. I would see just one cruising over the road, just literally above the streetlight. And I was like, you know, what, what's that? You know, it was like it was weird, but I just kept on seeing them. Um, and then I can't. Then you know, I didn't see them for a while, and. I mean, as this this is like over many years, mm-hmm. um, and then I basically had a face to face with a a ghost monk in the middle of a field, and uh, yeah, because I was just sitting there. Actually, the story is, I was sitting there and waiting for the for the pub to open. Actually, this little country pub, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was stone sober, and uh, you know, and I was I was waiting for this um, thing to open. I just looked across the field, and there was this guy standing there in the full monk's outfit with his, with his hood up, black face, everything. And I just thought it was like some local idiot, co- you know. Yeah, like cosplay or something. Yeah, <laughs> some, I, I just thought it was some idiot. So I just sort of shouted abuse at him for a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you doing? It's fat. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I just, I, I um, in the end, after he, he was standing there for like a minute or so, it's, just, it's quite a long period of time. Right. Um, I, I had a laser pointer with me, one of those little red laser dots. Back from, oh yeah, back yeah, 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 yeah. And I um, put a laser right on his on his face, uh, and it, I, I saw. I remember seeing the laser beam going on the floor, up his leg, on his chest, and onto his onto what where his face was. But there was no reaction. It was like hitting a, a statue. It so did he go like into the? Bo- oh wow! Is my audio sound like crap? I'm sorry. Is it? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, did he go into the bar then or like, what? no, no, no. He was just, he was just standing there like a statue in the middle of a field, just standing in the field. And you had a laser point and you're just hanging out. You're like, all right, I'm gonna see what this guy's, you know? Yeah. So I just started bugging him with the laser point and he didn't, and, move. um, he didn't, he didn't move. He just sat there stood there like a, like a, like a statue. And I actually thought someone had dumped a statue in the middle of the field. Right. Just it, like it, a it prank that, or something like, yeah, like high school yeah. kids or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got up and started walking towards it to have a look. Right. And then I got within like, I think it was about, I would say about 10 meters or five, 10 meters, uh, about, uh, that's about what, 10, 15 feet yeah. roughly. And, and, um, and it disappeared before my eyes. Like just vanished. Just dissipated. Yeah. Just dissipated. Wow. And after that, amazing. I kind of, that kind of 
kind of woke my brain a bit because I was like, oh, that's weird. I've, I've never seen anything like this before. Right, right. Um, right. It did it scare um, you, or like, what was your feeling? Was it was it like an ominous feeling? Were you like kind of freaked out, or I mean, did you feel like connected to like you know? I mean, like what what was going through your mind? Or I just thought it was I just thought it was a you know a guy playing a trick. Ah, I got gotcha. I just I just got up and just walked towards him. You know, right. Um, right. But when it vanished, it kind of did unnerved me a bit. I was like, what the hell's that? You know, I, I didn't. It kind of made me feel a bit on on edge. Right. Um, but then I <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Then the pub opened, and I went to the pub. <laughs> and I had a drink. You're like, I, I got need a whiskey right now. But I never got that one now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I actually mentioned to some of the locals a few, about a week later. I said to some of the old local men who who live live there. Yeah. And I said, yeah. you know, uh, I swear I just saw a monk across the field, something like that. I didn't go into detail. I said, they go, oh yeah, yeah, that's the mad monk. He he haunts here. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'd never seen that before, and I right. never even heard of that. Story. And I lived through all my life, and I never even heard of that story before. So that was completely out of the blue for me. Um, so that what got me into the paranormal. I was like, I want to try and figure this stuff out. So over, over a long period of time, I was I started watching all the paranormal shows, all the mainstream shows, all that right. stuff. Right. But none of it made any sense to me. Uh, to be honest with you, all the all the um, all the descriptions that the mainstream researchers were were producing and showing just didn't make any sense to me at all. Right. It didn't add up in my head logically or anything. Um, and then that, that, that went on for years and um, I watched all the American shows or British shows um, and all of them were saying, you know, there's always a dead this or dead that or spirit of this. And they, they come out with these, you know, all sorts of explanations, but none of it gelled with me. And I was like, well, I don't really understand this. And uh, to be honest with you, I think that's why, the paranormal or, or, the, or the ghost kind of thing, especially it, it, it's not taken very seriously. So, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, you're, you're an idiot kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but because yeah, I actually yeah. saw it with my own eyes and saw it close up, I was like, oh, well, actually there's something here, you know. Right, right. So, right. <laughs> so over the years, I, I mean, I, I work in IT. Um, I work in databases and I basically uh, do a lot, a lot of things called reverse engineering where basically a lot of um, processes are, are developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically a company will become uh, dependent on them, but no one knows how they work really. <laughs> yeah, someone dude, like I, me I, is, is then told. Yeah, dude. Someone, someone like me is then told to figure it out, document it, and, and then we can do stuff with it, you know. So that's, that's generally what I do. So I thought, well, you know, I've been doing this for, for a long time now, and I've, I've got a pretty good record of it. Of it. And it's like... If I can do this at, at work, what if I just applied the same thing to the paranormal just to see what I could find? You know, the same kind of thought process, the same kind of um, Me methodology, same right, kind yeah. of discipline. Yeah. So that's what I did. And um, so I, <laughs> I basically rented out a place called 30 East Drive, which um, is actually quite a, one of the most famous places here in the UK. It's uh, one of the most aggressive poltergeists in, in Europe. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And you can't stay there for long, longer than three or four days. It just does your head in. I mean, it really is a serious place. And um, I just went in there with a completely open mind just to see what, I mean, I had some ideas what it could be, but they were all proved <laughs> completely wrong when I went after a bit. I'd been in there for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But I had the whole thing filmed, and I, I started going over it with a, with a real tooth comb, mm -hmm. and then I started noticing things. And then what I did was I, I finally got hold of an image and I put it through my software. And to, to step back a bit, the whole, the whole experience, um, it confused me a lot because it all was happening upstairs and on the stairs. So you'd have like marbles getting thrown around, doors banging downstairs. And th th there'll always be the same door downstairs banging. Mm -hmm. Like, dunk, 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 dunk. and you go down there and there's no one there. And it's an internal door, so no one can get in or do it. And it has no like air vents or anything like that. Right. And it's and it's real clear banging. We actually caught it on tape. Huh. And um, so you have these these patterns going on in the building, but none of it made any sense. And it's like, this is not human behavior patterns. Human behavior patterns are completely different to what's occurring in this building. So finally, I got hold of this little image and I, I boosted it up and I added the contrast and, and cleaned it up a bit. And what came out was a small silver sphere hovering just off the ground. In, in the house 
in this hallway and or the stairway area? It was in the lounge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, once I looked at it, I realized I'd seen that before. And that is actually what I used to see going over my village ah, growing up. Okay. And I was thinking the same objects that are in the sky are in the buildings. And I, after I got that, after I got that, it all kind of hit me. It was like a big avalanche of like what was going on. So what's actually occurring in, in all the haunted buildings around the world? It, and it's all the same patterns. It's all the same behaviors. It's all the same processes and mechanics going in all these buildings. Uh, and it's all intermittent. So what's actually occurring is the same objects uh, that the World War II air, cr uh, air crews came into contact with. Um, called Foo Fighters. Fighters. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. And they were like these silver balls up in the sky and it, they were in swarms. Yep. And they were basically swarm the air aircrafts. Uh, and when they would do that, there would be uh, there would be like electrical problems with the aircraft. The gravity would change around the aircraft. The aircraft would stall. Um, they actually even went from being a silver ball to like a ball of energy, which would then pass inside the aircraft itself, wow. fly around the aircraft, and then out the back. Wow. So the actual crews were absolutely shitting their pants. I bet. When because they thought it was a Nazi weapon, and the Nazis thought it was an Allied weapon. Right. So they was opening fire on these things and nothing would happen. Um, the bullets would pass right through them or they would zigzag around them. So it, it really did scare the crews. Mm -hmm. But after a while, they, they noticed that uh, these, these objects were just, they, they would come and have a look and then they would leave. So they weren't actually doing anything other than kind of like having a look. But they would then leave. They weren't downing any of the Allied crafts no. or any of the, no. any of the German. It was just basically hanging out right and there's some photos yeah. there's some there's some really uh, old photos of foo fighters for that they've actually taken from world war ii that i've seen uh you yeah. know they're basically tail and planes they're like on the tail or you know they're kind yeah. of around the outside of them but you know yeah. and, and they, of course they're black and, they and white so it just looks like a white ball you know it doesn't look like hmm. you can't really tell a color or anything but yeah yeah, yeah it's it's they would they would tell the aircraft for hours and hours and then just disappear right. and uh once i saw that behavior and then i realized that the smaller variants are actually operating in buildings, I was like, well, that's the relationship there because it's the same technology operating into and the same behaviors as well operating in the two in, in the two areas. And what I realized what it is after a lot of thinking and, and, and sort of modeling, what it how it actually works is is that there are three variants of these Foo Fighters. Right. You've got type one, two, and three. The type one are the Foo Fighters they saw during World War II operate generally between 80 to 100,000 feet. They are seen from the ISS. They are seen from uh, aircraft. Uh, currently seen by the U.S. Navy, mm -hmm. which what the Pentagon, sorry, not the, the uh, Congress was talking about the other night. Uh, exactly the same object, a uh, big silver ball, right? Gotcha. Yep. So that's a Type One. Then you have the Type Threes, which are about the size of a, ba a, a baseball, and they operate in buildings. Okay. Then you have a Type Two, which is kind of like a one in the middle which operates in uh, woodlands and areas of harsh environmental, uh, harsh, harsh, harsh environments, you know. So the, the, the smallest variant, so what they do is, is that the Type 1s, um, when, they, when they're operating up in the atmosphere and they detect something in the atmosphere which shouldn't be there, this, they can't communicate with each other because when they do that, it, they become detectable. Okay. Right? So what they do is they, they relay off a third party. And when they relay it, they relay it off the ground. Okay. They relay it down to the Type Threes, who then come online and then start relaying up to the Type Ones. So it's basically they're just relaying signals back off of each other around, yeah. so that they, so that they can probably triangulate themselves. I mean, that's right. Trying... So once if you if you map all the haunted houses in the world, or mm -hmm. say in the UK, for instance, yeah, um, you'll notice they operate in lines and clusters, mm -hmm. which appear to follow environmental topology which oh. matches or very similar to our own microwave-based communication networks. Wow. So what it is, it's like a, um, this is why haunted houses become active or, or the houses become active for no reason mm -hmm. because the network has moved. So it shifts. So it's just like, yeah, it's right. dynamic. Yeah. yeah. It'll move around to its needs. So when uh, the signaling ha uh, starts happening, what will happen in these houses is people will start feeling a bit weird. They start feeling sick. And this is because the, uh, the type threes are, are producing high energy emissions, gamma rays and microwaves. Okay. 
So when um, people will start, you know, fainting, feeling sick, feeling a bit nauseous, mm -hmm. uh, get headaches. I got brain swelling when I was doing all this testing. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's basically down to gamma radiation. So it's these things are doing what I call burst relay. So a lot of data comes down, it goes and it relays it back up again. Now, when these the emissions get so high, what happens is they will perform actions to move you away from the emissions. So in 30 years drive, the sear itself is operating in the asset. And that's right. And when the um, emissions get so high, it bangs the coal shed door, which if you look at the, the layout of the house, is actually the most shielded part of the building. Okay. So it's banging the, it's banging the door. Everybody goes rushing down there. To and go then see it, it to go can, see the door bang, right? Okay. Yeah. And then it can broadcast. So it's basically tell it's basically getting you away from itself. So it's it's, it's trying right. to it's trying not to kill you, basically. That's right. Yeah. So why so why the hell are they operating inside the house? I mean, that's my first thing that keeps going through my head is like, <laughs> what are these things doing in houses? And I'm sure that's probably not an easy answer, and we probably don't have one, but I'm like, I, I don't know what they're doing, you know. I mean So from what I can tell is it's like any network. It's like our own cellular network. It goes where it has to go, mm -hmm. uh, not where it needs, not where it wants to go, kind of thing. So it could be in, in it could be in a part of a field. It could be in a building. But what I what I kind of think is actually going on is they use buildings to um, help shield the electronic emissions. Uh, probably so they're not identified. That's right. So because it's we could probably pick up on that if they're just. Yeah. So uh, if you if you if you can imagine like a, a third party coming into our atmosphere, mm -hmm. when it looks down onto the ground, it can't detect this network because it only comes online when it needs to, and it only does burst relaying, and then the emissions are shielded by the building itself. And this is what's happening. You see, is uh, this is this this behavior um, complies with the inverse square law of radiation, whereby the further you are away from the the radioactive source, uh, the safer it is. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. That's why it pushes you down the stairs and says, yep. go down there. And then, it, and then what, what happens is once the broadcast is done and the whole thing is, is sorted out, you will then go into a dormant state. And that's why paranormal activity is so intermittent mm -hmm. because it only switches on when it needs to and then shuts back down again. And then so nothing will happen for three or, three or four days mm -hmm. and then it will happen again. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's not even, it's not, I mean, from what I gather, you know, here in America anyway, it's always like, oh, this house is from 18, you know, every, yeah. anything from 1800 here in America is yeah. old, right? <laughs> it's, you know, not in that over in the UK where everything's, you know, thousands of years old, right? Like 1800 yeah. is, is like the oldest building. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's a haunted house. There's people who died in that house. There's all these people that died in this house. But I've heard of stories where people like, you know, brand new houses, 20, 30, 30 years old, less than that. And there wasn't any type of tragedy. There wasn't anybody, you know, there was no ax murder that happened. And then, and weird stuff happens is there uh, as well, you know? So, yeah, from what I can tell, uh, paranormal activity has absolutely nothing to do with human death rate or human death. Absolutely nothing. Right. Um, it's basically a dynamic network that moves around. Uh, causes diversions to move people away from high energy sources, um, and then it shuts down again. It's just that we've we've misidentified it as dead people, you know. Right. Uh, and this is why the uh, the mainstream paranormal researchers haven't really got anywhere in the last fifty years. They just go into a building, they'll they'll run around it for a while, they'll see some stuff happen, but then it will all go quiet. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. And so these these uh, spheres have been photographed, have been videoed uh, in this in Thirty East Drive. Um, they're, they're everywhere, absolutely yeah. everywhere. Yeah, literally, they they are literally. Everywhere. I'm going to jump into this real quick and try to share this if if this is cool. If you can see this still, um, this is your this is the Facebook page, right? Yeah. Um, so this one here is the one in Thirty. Yeah, that one. This one yeah. here, yeah. So what's this? What are we staring at here? That's a Type Three sphere. Was the miniaturized Foo Fighter? Oh, oops, I'm sorry. Go back one. So that's yeah. that's the Type Three. That's in a that's in a house. Is that the house that you were telling me about? That you that's were... right. Yeah. So this just materialized. Yeah. It, is this like an IR camera? What What did you use to take this? Uh, this was actually taken by a group I know, but uh, I think it was a, I think it was an infrared camera. Yeah. Infra okay. Okay. Wow. And it just 
it materialized in the house. Yeah. Uh, wow. So that's the type three that's just hanging out. I mean, and then you got some other ones here. Yeah. So what happens is, is that the type ones intercept external groups and interests as in other UFOs. Uh -huh. uh, and this is a, an event that was caught over Washington, D.C. just a few months ago. There was nothing okay. on the news about it, but a friend of mine caught it on camera. And if you went, if you look at the previous image, you'll see it just before and after the explosion. Oops. Uh, no, not for the next one. This one here. That's it there. So there is triangulating on it. And then you have the interception where it blows it all up. Wow. So this, this big area here that we're looking at is the something the UFO or whatever craft or whatever. Craft, so that, yeah. so these three, it looks like four here, maybe, but yeah, they, they could be four. Yeah. That they triangulate on the craft and they're actually blowing them up. Yeah. Wow. Oops. Well, this is, this is a video or an inverted video of one getting blown up. Uh, you can't, you can just about make it out that it's um, like a cigar shaped craft. And as okay. it turns, you'll see that, there's little like orbs um, surrounding it or moving around it. And then it will just basically light up. Wow. And it just disintegrates these things. Yeah. So you can just about make it out. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay. It looks like there's something that's popping in around it. it here. Yeah. Here it goes. And this is what, this is the uh, cigar. Okay. Boom. Wow. Okay. Just getting kind of smoked. Wow. Jeez. Where was this taken at? I can't remember off the top of my head. It was sent to me. So, uh, wow. so, but, so, so these orbs, I mean, what's the prevailing theory here that, I mean, they're protecting. And this is interesting. That's just some nice lightning, I guess. Wow. No, you see the little ball. You see the, this guy uh, here. Oh yeah. This guy right here. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the lightning is coming from. Wow. Um, it doesn't look natural to me, but I'm not an expert on, on, on yeah. lightning. So. Yeah, no, me either. I here's another couple more in a field. Yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty. Uh, that's that's a pretty clear daylight photo right there. Yeah, um, that are most common UFO seen today. Um, everyone's seeing them. People who fly drones see them all the time. Right. Um, they whiz by. Um, yeah. And this one, do you know where this one's from or where this was taken? Oh, God, I have so many. <laughs> I kind of lose track. Yeah. Uh, but that, that was taken in England, uh, I believe. Um, That's pretty clear, things. pretty low to the ground. Another triangulation here is what it is. This one here is actually a very old picture. Mm -hmm. um, this was, if you look at the next image along. Oop. No. Next one. This one. You might have seen this. this is like said to yep. be one of the best UFO images ever, ever recorded. Right. So and there's some people this, recently online are saying that that's just the uh, camp, like the lens of the camera again or something. Oh yeah. Well, they, they always find something. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, if you look at the next image along, uh, you'll see that there's actually three spheres going into intercept interceptor. Wow. You know, and never noticed that from that photo. No. Yeah. Interesting. It is three. Three is the magic number they say, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's this. This, yeah, I know you and I have spoken about this. This is so you've created an app, you've created a yeah. way to, to, to activate these things, you've figured you out how to turn, to, well, or like agitate them or enough to turn them on, right? To figure out where they're at. Am I wrong um, in saying that? Kind of. Um, the app itself works in um, in 30 Strive where we test it a lot. Okay, um, you can basically set up all your sensors and then turn the app on, and the phone is in flight mode. Um, and suddenly, within within literally thirty seconds, all the sensors start going off, and then the uh, the their little units will start responding to intelligently back and forth. Uh, so it, it does it does do something. How the how the app works is uh, these uh, spheres also create crop circles. So wow. what they did, what I found was was there was a code among the crop circles. So I copied the code and stuck in my own commands, and then did some magic to put it into a an app, and then played down 30 and stuff starts happening. Wow. So this is this, what I'm looking at, does this look like an eye socket? Is this an eye socket? Is this, yeah. Is this a yeah. nose? Is this the a mouth area? And this is, yep. is this an orb? No, no, this, I, I, this is one of my other little units I came, I came up with. Okay. Um, I figured, I figured a way of, of tricking um, 
so so basically these uh the seers are look on the lookout for other ufos right okay. so i figured a way of of tricking of, of tricking that uh, process and then once you do it they come and have a look Ah, so you're mimicking like a UFO. You're, you're That's you're, right. You're basically spoofing a UFO, and these yeah. things are showing up to come try to check it out. Yeah. And it, wow, that's so. What's is this? Uh, the moon up here, or is that just? A... I don't know what that is. To be honest with you, um, wow. that was actually done, made in a tunnel. That was done in a tunnel, so I, I don't know what where that is, what that is. Wow. Uh, that's even more bizarre than at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot. I mean, look, here's another one. There is three around a yeah. craft, right? Yep. And uh, also the the recent um, uh, Pentagon images have got mm -hmm. the same as well. If you look wow. at uh, this the one next to it, oh, uh, this one here, that one there, you see the three spheres around it. One, two, three, yeah, yeah. If you look at the next one, Oop. yeah, this is the this is the intercept process. So at the back there, the this is what's seen um, all the time. So you have the relay at the back, and then you have the three uh, spheres at the front. Okay. So what the, what happens is is that the target is say down the bottom there, right. and what happens is that the the spheres are, are communicating via microwave or yeah by microwave back to the relay, which which then talks to the other spheres. So that that setup allows it to be stealthy because there's no emissions going towards the target. Ah, so these are basically the relays jumping in data to here. That's right. And these three kind of get their coordinates or whatever their mission is, and then they're dumping, right. up, dumping on the target and taking it out. So they're taking them out with, like, how if you figured out what they're using to take out these no, crap? No, I have no idea. I don't know, but it's it's um, it must be high, pretty it's pretty big, right? High energy, something, yeah. Right, they I appear mean, to surround it and then shoot all at the same time and just completely take it out. I mean, yeah. That's just crazy. And this is the thing that we're talking about. So somebody has yeah. one of these things, right? You said there's been a couple of them that have actually been captured. And this was, which was, yeah. what type is this one? Is this the type? Type one. Type one. So that's, eight, you said 80,000 to 100,000 feet? Yeah. That's hanging yeah. out there. And this, do you know, what's the providence of this one? Well, this one was found years ago. I think it's about between um, 40 to 60 years ago, I okay. think. Um and it was filmed. It was found in a farm, on a, a farmland, out in the middle of like in the U.S. Uh, and uh, it was actually one of twelve, I think. Wow. Um, but the farmer, uh, he took eleven of them, then gave this one to the guy I know. Mm -hmm. And I think the farmer sold them to the military because he came back looking for this one, and he was getting quite agitated about it. And the the owner wouldn't give it to him. He's like, right. no, it's mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, it appears that the farmer sold the other eleven to the to the military. Wow! And this one has been in his shed, and he what? gets it out now and again, rolls it around, and it can roll itself around. It vibrates, it shakes, it emits gamma rays as well. So it's dangerous, uh, right? I mean, I mean, gamma radiation, right? That's what we're looking at. It is. It is actually in the safe margins, but it is still pumping it out. Yeah. Wow. So that's not. So, like, do you have any idea what state this is? Sorry, say again. The state. What state was this in that that this happened? I think uh, it's in Texas. Texas. Okay. All right. Because Texas is massive, so that that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. But so they had a malfunction. Something happened where yeah. this this thing these dropped out of the sky, but it's still online. I mean, it's still that's right. Work, it's still working and rattling around. If if, I, if you just put it on the floor, it will roll itself around all day. That's amazing. It, uh, yeah, and you'll also avoid obstacles. Um, so it, it looks like it's kind of like stuck in BIOS, if you know what I mean. Right. It, right. it hasn't been booted up properly, but it's in perfect condition. Um, That's amazing. There's also an interesting bit because at the top, there's like an opening at the top, like an aperture. Okay. And it actually looks like it's half unsealed. So, and what's interesting is, is that it's not like there's a, a, a separate plate. Yet it appears, it appears that the metal can seal and reseal it, seal itself. Like nanotechnology, where it can open itself up and then then reseal completely. Wow! But it's but it's cracked a little bit. You said it's like a little. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. And I know I asked you, and and I dug for it, but is there a video of this thing rolling around? Um. Yes, I I believe there was one in the in the group somewhere. It's been okay. there for a while now. Um. 
I'm in the, I'm in media here on the page. I'm just trying to see if here's another guy, right? This is a, Oh this yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. So we, we had, we've um, also kind of, we know where this one is and um, we've got material analysis on this one. Um, so yeah, the, the material analysis has concluded that it wasn't made from here. Wow. Uh, it's actually really exotic. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that if you look at the one parked outside the, the, um, this is the, the Vatican, Vatican, right? Vatican right? Museum. Yeah. And these aren't just at the Vatican. They're all over the lots of religious areas. Um, they're pretty much identical. So I think the Vatican know a lot more than they, than they, uh, than they let on. The Vatican knows a lot more than that. Mm. <laughs> but this one's Mexico, right? The guy down at the bottom? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that was material, material analyst, and, and it's not yes. from here. Wow. So... Yeah. That one's not rolling around. That one looks like I took a hit pretty good. That one's that, that one's broken up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd really like to find that video uh, in here. I know Here's that... another one. Uh, actually, go down, go down, go yep, down. Yep, yep. Is that it there? Uh, here. Or... No, no, no. Next one. Is that it? Like, is that just no, no, it's just um, yeah. Actually, I sent you a link, didn't I? I sent you a link with it rolling around. With oh, it, did with you? It by... Yeah. Uh, uh, of its um okay cool let me let me see if i can dig that out real quick but so so you've you started figuring this out and and you got you got far enough i mean you i mean i'm i'm in it you're in it i mean you, we know how to do you know we think a little bit different <laughs> yeah. than a lot of people do so yeah I mean, um so you you just kind of use the analytics and data comprehension and yes started following the data and started figuring this out that's right and once you did, you kind of got to the point where you're like, well, I can make this happen and I can kind of, yeah, f you know, get these things, um, to, to come and look. And yeah, it yeah. seems like, uh, that they, they, they're protecting, I, I don't know if they're protecting us. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word to use or protecting. Here we go. I found it, but they're pro protecting there's they're doing something to, uh, to these, these other, uh, um, fears or, 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 I mean, these fears are actually assisting in, um, taking these UFOs out. Okay. This thing's shaking. Yeah. It shakes on stop pretty much. Put your hand on it and stop it. And it just, just rattles it around. Huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So, Obviously, the the guy knows <laughs> where where uh, you know the guy the guy in Texas sold the rest of the, the government. This stuff didn't get sold, or this mm -hmm. one this one's hidden somewhere. They probably mm -hmm. know where it's at if they know the guy and they know the guy who sold it. So, how are you guys keeping that thing safe? Well, with the guy lives in a very remote location and he has a very low profile, I think. And he, he as I said, it's been in a shed for for a long, long time. Um, his wife is actually scared of it. So he only gets it out like on a, on occasions. So um, yeah, that's the story behind it. But he says that we can come and analyze it anytime we want, um, and we can bring scientists over and, and do whatever, as long as the the object doesn't leave his property. He's happy. Um, so it's perfectly open for scientists to go and have a look at it. Um, I mean, I haven't been able to travel because of COVID, right? And you know all that, all that stuff. But uh, hopefully, you know, maybe maybe later this year or next year, I can get over there to look at it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's what it is. It, it is a, it's a bet sphere 2.0. Wow. Wow. So, you know, it, it uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the Tom, have you read secret machines? Um, Tom DeLonge's books, the, uh, the, the fiction. No. no, no, no. It's amazing that some of the things that you're describing here kind of fall into, you know, it's, it's fiction, right? So basically it's, it's, um, fiction that's, basically just riddled with truths. Right. But they read it, they wrote yeah. it away, in a way that to hide some things, but uh, some of the things that they described is like a hive, there's like a hive, a uh, hive mind. And there's like these, these things that kind of come in and they kind of attack and it sounds like that. And it does, it does, mm. it does say that like the cigars, you know, are the bad, you know, the bad guys, right. That the big cigar actually, are the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's actually a picture in there of the spheres surrounding the uh, cigars. Oh, okay. Here they really pop that back up. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, 
uh, that's one of the things that first popped out to me. Is it this one here? This is the one of the most famous. Oh, yeah. The most famous one, I think, is this uh, Italy in the yeah. uh, 50s or 60s? I can't remember. Something like that. Yeah. That's one of the old ones from years ago. Uh, I think that's from a gun cam as well. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's Italy, if I'm not mistaken. And there's three spheres. Wow. And if you, there's another one in there. Um, I can't see so well on that one. Uh, yeah. But there's another, there's one, one from the US Navy. I think it's. Uh, oh, yeah. The one, I think I've seen that one that's coming out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. That one's kind of like hotly debated. They said that, uh, that's probably just a. Somebody yeah, I mean, they say that, but they're there. They're, there's objects are there. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Right, uh, right, right. No, I, I mean, I I, yeah. uh, uh, I, thought I saw it at one point, too. What's this? Is that somebody? Does somebody have another one, or is that just a big stand? Yeah, that's a, that's a smaller variant. That's a type three. That's the one in buildings. Wow. So where the hell is this? Where'd this come from? That was found in a in a someone found that in a mud mud bath somewhere, but I'm still trying to find out the location of them. Um, it's proving a little bit tricky, um, but I'm trying to find that person. Wow. So I mean, to me, just the, describing the behavior of oh, here's some Foo Fighters. We were talking about this earlier, right? Here's some Foo Fighters. Yeah. In circle in yeah. the plane, right? Yeah. There they are, hanging out. That looks like a U.S. plane or an Allied plane there. And uh, and also, one. if you look at the one over there, that's right. That one, uh, the arrows, the far left. Oh, yeah. It's the same. They always have the triangular uh, configuration. Um, obviously, Everybody... the, the bottom the bottom is the relay, and the two top ones are the uh, are the intercepts. Wow. So it, it seems like we have somebody that's uh, looking out for us or something. Yeah, it seems someone is. <laughs> I mean, um, it, it seems like anyway, it seems, or ah, there he is. You see that one? That's the one with the cigar. You see top, top, uh, right. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. That's the one. Mm hmm. There you go. There it is. Wow. They're there. <laughs> so, how, like, how many lists are you on? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I haven't had any, any grief from anyone, to be honest with you. Really? So, yeah. I would imagine that you hit a couple nerves and, and somebody's watching you, just to be honest. <laughs> oh, I'll show you something that will really blow your mind. If you look at um, the one of Jesus on the left, that's it, or whoever that is, you yeah. see, the, see the glass sphere at the bottom? You see the... the oh, wow, they're right there. Yeah. Was this Da Vinci? I can't remember. I, I, I think it was, or somebody along that era. And that matches the previous image, which is the same configuration, the same formation. Wow, look at that. Amazing and he's pointing stuff. to the sky as well. <laughs> sure is. Look at that. Mind-bending stuff, man. I mean, it, you know, when you try to get down to the bottom of all this stuff, it, it starts coming out where... This, is this a blown-up one? Or is this no, other? that's the one. I, I believe that's in New York. Oh, yeah. Um, that one's in New York. Or D.C. Right here. Yeah. D.C. What are they doing? That's amazing. I just want to put it out there. Just show everybody that's what's going on. Here, here's another one. Yeah, I forget where that is, but that's uh, they're all UN. over the place. This is the UN. Yeah, the UN. Right? That's right. That's right. The UN. Wow, they're just putting it right in front of your face, right? Yeah, <laughs> they're just letting you know that uh, they know and and you don't. Now, and... th this is this is where it gets interesting. Is in the pyramids, if you see the the uh, the image of a guy with a long skull on the top right, on the right. Yeah, Tutankhamen. Yeah, this. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you student. I don't know who that is, but right. it's those skull types. Now, if you close that mm -hmm. and look at this image on the on the left uh, next to the spear, that's the one. That's a, a thermal image inside East Drive, that East Drive. It looks like a guy walking away, and you look at his skull. So, is it thermal image from where again? Yeah, uh, thirty East Drive. Wow! Because. These spheres, these spheres were, were inside these buildings. Mm -hmm. So are these guys. It's just we can't see them. Wow. So they're they're like portals. Um, well, um, from what I can tell, the uh, the type threes have what I term as a insert and extract process. So what that means is is a the common the common behavior you see in these in the house is objects will disappear 
and uh, fall fall from the, from midair out of nowhere, like an orange will just appear and fall to the ground. Okay. Okay. So what that appears from an IT point of view is like, well, they're testing something on an object to see if the process works. Okay. Yeah. So once they test or not test it on an object, they then send a living person through. Wow. Now, what happens in what happens in uh, these buildings is, although you can't physically see them, um, you can detect movement from when they walk around, because you can't. You can hiding in light is actually fairly simple. It's just a redirect of photons, uh, but weight and mass can't be masked. So you you can detect them walking around. And that is what my demonstrations show, is that when you um, run run the code, suddenly they start you can st they they start detecting movement on the floor. Now this is the this is a, a really good Im image here. So this is on the staircase, and if you look just to the, to the left, you can see a silver ball. Well, right it looks here. to be a silver ball. That's the sphere there. Okay. Now the if you look here, that's its legs, and that's its the other leg. And then if you move up, that's its, that's its body, and that's its head, and you can see its arms. So what that is, that was, um, that was uh, recorded with uh, an infrared camera. So what it appears to be is that the, the, the stealth that they use is specifically designed for visible light. But if you use other cameras like infrared, especially close up, you see slight errors in, in, the, in the processing. So what you see is light refraction. Like the stairs okay. don't, don't match up here. That's right. It's all light refraction. Wow. Because the stealth isn't, it's not tuned to infrared. It's tuned to visible light. So vis visually, you wouldn't see it at all. Just no. Your eyes, you're never going to see it. Infrared, you're going to pick it up. But, but these guys are as physical as us. They're just sitting there and, in, you know, we just can't see them. But you can detect them through movement because obviously... They're walking around and, and uh, weight yeah. and mass they can't mask. No. Wow. Patrick, you're coming. You're, you've got a lot of stuff going on. You got a book. Yeah, yeah. The book itself is um, the only um, paranormal book in the world. It's called Quantum Paranormal. Um, 21st century, 21st century uh, analysis on a paranormal phenomena. It's the only uh, paranormal book in the world that. Other technical specialists, IT people, engineers, um, actually agree with and have endorsed it. I even have ex-military who endorsed the book as well. That's amazing. I know and your site's pretty awesome too. I, I, I dig the site. I, I like the way you build it. I mean, obviously you can tell you're an IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, but here's your book, Quantum Paranormal, and it's yeah. super rad. I mean... Um, it's a great book. I mean, how long did it take you to get into that? To write it? Yeah. Um, it took me about four years. Wow. Because I, every word in the book is very specifically, um, specifically chosen. So I didn't want to, I didn't, I wanted a book that the debunkers couldn't debunk or, you know, they, they, they could, they really struggled with it. And I've had people read it. And I say, can you actually beat the logic that's presented in the book? And they go, no. Right. Yeah, but yeah, they can't. It's in Steve Colburn. I mean, Steve, he's was it patient seventeen, right? That's right. Yeah, he's patient seventeen. I mean, he's the guy that had the thing in his leg, and he did that whole Corbell film, and uh, yeah, taking off all those things. I mean, that's just if you if you go up and see the, the endorsements. Technical re uh, reviews and endorsements. That one. Yeah. So this is, there's no other group or paranormal group or researchers I know who have endorsements from people of this level. Right. No, that's awesome. That's, uh, I mean, you're on to something, dude. I really think you are. I really, I really do. And I think what I'm trying to figure out is what in the hell is going on with you know, like it's technology, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's where I'm getting into. I mean, it, this is tech, right? This is, this is, um, this isn't spiritual. This isn't, you know, no. 
this isn't uh you know balls of plasma but these things can become plasma right i mean it's yeah, not so they're not they're not always physical so yeah what what um well so the light that they emit is a byproduct of the propulsion system so what you have is a high energy source in a gas environment uh, a high energy source then um, energizes gas molecules that then cause create photons of light it's the same process as uh, natural lightning uh, so uh, that's why you get this really nice, clear, pure light. But depending on the, the frequency and also the gas that's passing through at the time, you'll get different colors. So when people say they see blue orbs or green orbs, it depends on what frequency and also, yeah, what gas is, is actually in the environment as, as well. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. And, and, uh, but they, they do, apparently, well, they, they do, from what I've seen, uh, and also what the pilots saw during World War II, they can, do, they can do a thing called quantum tunneling. So what that means is you can go from a solid object to something in the middle, like a gray state, and it can then tunnel through walls. And so then that's where you're telling me they're going, oops, they're they going right go through, through walls. Yeah. Well, so that's why they float through the house unimpeded, just gone. That's right. Yeah. So hmm. what's your theory? The net, the, the uh, what, how it models out is it's a global defense network that intercepts space based threats. Wow. And this is why, uh, when you really think about it, if you look at animal mutilation and, and human mutilation cases as well, they always occur in remote areas. Right. So, what I've kind of, kind of modeled or how I've figured it out is. They're, they closely monitor areas of high human density or, or medium human density. So cities and villages are fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're like on top of a mountain somewhere, then response time is much slower. You're all by, and, you're all by yourself, right? Yeah. And the thing is, is that you, you got to understand the only unique resource, not just on Earth, but in our solar system, as far as we know, is human DNA. So there's a, there's a thing in DNA called synergy. Uh, do you know about that at all? Is that the antenna? It creates an antenna. No, no, no. So synergy is, is when the, the genetic pool becomes too small and therefore um, errors in our, our, our genetic uh, makeup become really apparent. Gotcha. So okay. you'll, what, what, what we see in these... Um, and these small villages, up in like isolated villages, where they're all like the cousins or have babies with the other cousins and, and so forth, right. the children start dropping dead at 10 years old, just drop dead, because of all these problems, genetic problems they have. They have mental problems, physical problems, and it's, it's, just, it's because the genetic pool is too small. Gotcha. Now, the thing is, is that mathematically, the, the problems that we're seeing currently in um, small villages, isolated villages, well, one day propagate out to towns and then cities and then countries and it'll be global. So the only, the only way to, stick it, to fix this problem is to infuse new DNA to then keep the race going. So what you have is a very probably technically advanced race, but the DNA is killing them. So that's when you have to go somewhere else, find a planet like Earth where we're not technically that advanced, a fresh DNA batch. And it's like, we want some of that. And that's oh, what it appears wow. to be. So what it is, is the spheres themselves are protecting the human genetic resource against these external groups. Because they're but trying it's not to come and take them. They're coming to try to, to, to yeah. take the, the DNA and take us. And that's where abductions happen and maybe all those other things, right? Yeah. So, but it's not perfect. So as I said, is a places, if you're in a remote area, that's you no know, like people disappear, hunters disappear, um, you know. And the missing four one one thing, um, David Politis yeah. has that whole thing where it's just like national parks where there's nobody out there ever, and it's just in the yeah. middle of nowhere, and people just show up and end up missing, right? That's right. So yeah, stick to close cities. A lot of people, <laughs> <laughs> basically, we want to um, be safe. Yeah, but that's that's what it appears to be. Um, wow. So you can understand why why like. They keep it quiet because it really is a can of worms. Oh, um, yeah. 
Well, yeah. I mean, nobody wants to hear, hear anything about that. I mean, that's, that was one of the biggest things that I'm assuming like we're food for something else. Right. I mean, maybe that's why they want to keep mm -hmm. the lid on it because we're cattle or something like that. But um, you know, one thing that came back to me that I, I wanted to ask you about is that um, somehow you decoded crop circles, right? Somehow you yeah. figured out the pattern of a crop circle and you decoded that and you actually wrote it into code and then mm. were able to use that for this app. Well, how the hell did you do that? Well, I, I didn't decode. <laughs> yeah, I didn't decode the crop circle. That was done by a mathematician uh, years ago. Uh, I think an English guy. Um, and that was just out there in the public domain. So I okay. kind of looked him up and looked at the code he found it was. Uh, and then I just basically copied it and stuck my own commands in it. And I was like, okay, just give it a try and see what happens. And, and it's, it's, I'll tell you what, it's, it's bonkers because I can go in my garden and put my sensors around it and push the code on. And within 45 seconds, roughly, they start lighting up. It's amazing. What are the sensors that you have that light up? What are uh, they, static. What are... They pick up uh, a lot of static sensors. So the, it, it appears the byproduct of a field-based propulsion system is static. So it's electromagnetic and, static activity, kind of? Yeah, it must be something like that. I mean, I mean, I need better gear, really, to, to really hone down on it. Uh, I mean, I've done the best I can with pretty much just my own budget. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but it's like, if, you, if you've got some serious funding, you could really dig this in. Uh, but the, the, I did an experiment about two, three years ago, uh, up in up in the hills of Manchester, basically in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and we were about 3,000 feet up, up a hill. There was no no signals, not even mobile phone signals, nothing. Um, and I, I set my, my unit off to see what happened. And we stood there for about 45 minutes, and nothing was going on. And suddenly, a big uh, static source starts going around us. And all the, uh, all the sensors were going off. We were hearing it going, and all that. And also, when that started happening, party guys activity started happening. Wow. So we were getting EVPs. I was talking. Uh, and then suddenly, my voice would talk back to me in, in my voice, but saying something slightly different. But not all uh, really, like ED, EVP back. EVP playback. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, we caught it all on tape. And. <laughs> Also, stones were getting thrown against uh, the walls, like bang and stuff. Uh, also, we, what happens is you start seeing things out of your corner of your eye, Preferable. like, yeah. like um, shadows going by. Um, so every time we do these tests, weird stuff happens. Um, let's say the one with the, the face, that was one of our tests. Uh, we've done another one, which is actually a bit more freaky. Um, this guy just appeared out. Of, we were in the middle of a wood, right? Like midnight. And this guy just comes out and looks at us. And he, he, he isn't human. He's just got big eyes looking at us going, you know, like, what, what are you doing? Kind of thing. Uh, and then he, we both had torches on him. We caught it on tape as well, but it's a little bit blurry. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the group, there's a, there's a picture. If you, if you have a look, I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, my mic sounds crazy tonight. Sorry about that. That's right. Does it sound like? Does it sound okay? Do I sound like I'm making? Yeah, it yeah, you sound fine. Okay, cool. I'll show you which one it is. Um, go down. All right. No, go, go, go up, go up, go up. All the way up. Keep going. Hmm. That's the top. Okay. Right, right, yeah. There, there, stop. You see the one uh, second from the left? Not that one, that one. That's it. Yeah, have a look at that. And if you look closely, you can see like two glowing eyes. Looks like his mouth is open. Right here. And then yeah. his eye. Yeah. And then it kind yeah. of a head right here. Yeah. It just popped out. I mean, did you see that visually or is that just an infrared? Yeah. No, visually. It was well, visually it was really clear. It's just the camera, did, you know, the camera didn't zoom in as far as we needed it to go. Is that uh, close? Was How really close clear. was that to you? How close was that to you? Um, about 60 feet. Wow. And that just, I mean, you clear as day, you can see it. You just, yeah. Poof. Wow. No audio or anything. Didn't hear anything. Didn't, didn't make any noises. Didn't, didn't you no. didn't feel no. anything. You didn't like have any type of 
sickness or anything like that? No, no, no. But it was it was quite intense. Of course, it was quite intense. Yeah, yeah. So the, another question I have is: Have you tried to do any of the, you know, CE five? Have you tried to do any of these? No. Um, none of that stuff while doing any of these things. No psychic type of projections no. or none of that. No. Um, because personally, no. I, I, you know, I've, you know, kind of done that where I got a group of guys, um, brothers of mine, and we were out. Same thing, middle of nowhere. There wasn't even power we were at. Right? There was no. Mm-hmm. It was everything was solar and, and wind, and we just sat in a circle. And we meditated for like 20 minutes, just kind of played mm. some, you know, tones and meditated just, and all we did was just meditate saying, Hey, anything that's out there, we'd love to see you come in. And we did that two nights in a row and we had orange orbs just pop in and just come in and just hang out and float around. And, you know, I got it all. Um, I have a psionics, uh, night vision, color night vision mm. camera, and I captured all that and it was there and it was intelligent and it was, you know, it was, it, you know, it orange, does orange, you know? Yeah, it, it does appear that uh, you can, or at least they can read your mind. I know it sounds weird. No, no, no. Yeah, you can. It does. It does appear that they can, uh, or at least send messages to you. Mm-hmm. In in one, way. I remember when I was doing like tests in in thirty, um, I did something. I, I I put this camera in a place, and in my head, I saw like a flash of of this camera, like you know, like looking like I was looking at it. Mm-hmm. And then the moment I, I did that, it came flying off the wall. The so it's like the, the camera yeah. flew off the wall. Yeah, and it was actually held on the wall with um, adhesive, like proper GoPro adhesive, and that stuff is really strong. And that just popped off like it was a cork. And um, yeah, so it's like you can send you messages to say, "Oh, look at this," you know. But I'm not. I, I'm, I wasn't sure if it was going both ways, but it could. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I would it sounds that. like it could. I would love to have that. I mean, because of all of the tech that you've figured it out and all of the other um, psychic phenomena or whatever the, you know, spiritual you know, consciousness phenomena, I would say <clears throat> that people have kind of figured out. I would love to have those two marry, you know, to come together at least to see well, what be good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, you yeah. have the app going, you got your sensors going, you have all these things and you have mm. the intention, you have like a, a group of, you know, um, people that are, you know, trying tentatively just yeah. to, to like bring about these things and to see if that actually helps to amplify, you know, the whole mm. thing. Um, but no, that's amazing work. Patrick, I mean, you're doing great, great work, man. Awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 but it's difficult. I mean, it's like you're doing it all on basically just a shoestring budget, you know? Oh, so yeah. it's like, it, it's the way it is. But um, the model that is presented in the book and how I describe it, it just, it just seems to add everything up. Um, no, it's great. I think that, you know, I mean, th- these lines, I mean, have you, have you done anything to map out the, yes. the, the lines of where you think this, uh, I'm trying to come up with a word, the communications network or yes, whatever these, the, they're following, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Only oh, in, I, the I haven't done the U S okay. I okay, haven't just, done the U S because I, I did the UK because the UK is a much smaller sample, right? but also I can find out quite easily if people, if that's a really good location or, or just like, you know, intermittent while in America, because it's a much bigger sample is it's too much, too much noise. So it was very hard to, to figure that one out. But if you look at, if you, if you look in the photographs, you can see where I've mapped it out and you oh, can okay. see quite clearly that it's a, uh, it's a relay system. Um, so they, are they using the earth's magnetic um, properties to make that happen? I have no idea, but it, it appears to, it, it, it appears to be a um, microwave um, relay network, uh, which is very similar to our own. Uh, if you go down and down. Oh, here's the flap. Yes. This, this yeah. is the flap, and right? That's right. And you can see that it's partially open. And on the other side, it's actually sealed. Right, right here. Yeah. Wow. And there's like, doesn't it, it almost look like, you know. It, it, and that is so fine, you can't even put your nail in, nail into it. It's really? so fine. Yeah. Right, right in there, you can't stick your fingernail in it. No, anything. you can't feel it. Wow. That's amazing. And look how shiny it is. I mean, it's got dirt on it. It's got stuff on it, you know, whatever. But I mean, look at the reflection rate on that thing. It's, I mean, it's mirroring that fence perfectly. Yeah. 
sorry. I just, I just stopped on that one. Cause I figured that was one that, that, uh, and here, and here it is. Here's another shot. of Yeah. It. And you can see here it's sealed. Wow. Amazing. So it's, it's right. It's advanced uh, nanotechnology that can seal and reseal itself. That's amazing. I mean, we have some of that. Oh, here's a couple more. Ah, this is a good one. So this was taken. This is a video. This is still from a video over London just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And there you can see the sea at the sea at the bottom and the top. And there's actually one at the side as well. I think that's in the next image. Uh, but they always use the same triangulation process. Um, there we go. So there's another two there. Uh, so they always use three, and there's always a, a, like a triangulation process. And what it appears to be is they get in this formation, they get real close to it. And then once they're, they're kind of locked in that position, there's nowhere for the, the craft to go. They, they, can't, they can't just get out. That's right. They can't, they can't leave. What is this? This looks like madness to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, sorry, I know we were trying to find the uh, global, uh, or at least the UK network of of uh, the grid system. There we are. See the one next? It's the second on the, the third on the left. Oop. Just top, top, top. Keep going up. Next one. Oh, this one here? No, no, no. Uh, right, right, go right, up, up, up. No, next one, left, that's it. No, yeah, that's it. That's it. See here. Now, this here, the, these buildings here are the most haunted houses in the UK. Okay. The most active. Nope. These pegs. These ones here. And they're active because that's the main data line. So the the more the more information that goes through this relay, the more emissions and therefore more diversionary tactics. Wow! And it's coast to coast. Yeah. And I also did a few little ones, I think, in the US. If you close this one, this head triangle at the on right here? No, no, left. That. That's in the US. Bam. Okay. So it's in lines and clusters, uh, which is typical of a microwave based relay network. This is uh, either Bowling Green, Kentucky, I'm thinking. And wow, okay. By the way, this is why people go a little bit crazy who who live in these buildings, because if they're exposed to these emissions constantly, then it will have a a neurological effect on the human brain. Well, yeah. So you're talking basically like brain damage. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is a graphic of how how it works. Wow. Jeez. So yeah, so there people are suffering brain damage from being in there. They're having trauma. They're having that. <clears throat> yeah. Like when I was doing my tests, my brain started to swell in my skull. Uh, cause I, I was in this, in this 30 East drive for, for quite a long time and we didn't leave the building. So we're always in there and my brain decided to swell and it's really bad. And I didn't actually know what it was at the time. Um, but that's what it was. Um, and also, you see, before just before I went to 30, I had really good night vision. I could see really well in the dark. Right. After that, it was like I was blind as a bat. I wow. couldn't, it was like everything seemed denser and darker. Like I couldn't see the detail anymore. So it looks like I've been kind of like slightly, you know, impaired in that, in that area. And this kind of rem uh, reminds me of, of something is, do you remember there was a, a a film called Demon House. Yes. Yeah, I think Zach Bacon, Zach Bacon, Zach Bacon. Um, and what they did was they they put a engineer uh, into the basement, and guess what happened? <clears throat> he had multiple organ fate. Wow. And this is what I mean. I have a little bit of a, a gripe with the the Main Street because. They're putting people into dodgy situations like this. And then basically they're having life-changing injuries. And then what happens is the production company goes, oh, wash your hands of that one. And they go to the next one. There's no real, in the mainstream, they, there's no real research. It's, it's basically entertainment. But the right. problem is, is the more extreme they go, the more uh, 
injuries or more damaged people will become. Well, you know, you, you know, it reminded me of when you were talking about your brain swelling was, I mean, you know, Skidwalker Ranch. Have you seen where, you know, Thomas Witterton had that, they have the x-rays and all that stuff where his brain actually swelled. Mm. I mean, it sounds kind of like that. I mean, I wonder, well, yeah. if, I wonder if we can get a hold of uh, Brandon, hook him up with you and, and figure yeah, out, I mean, good. that would be rad to get you out there on, on the ranch and see if you can spin some of these things up. <laughs> and guess, guess, what they're, guess what they're picking up a skinwalker is. <clears throat> so the Sears, they use three networks. <clears throat> or what, what, how I modeled it out, mm -hmm. they use three networks. So when we're up in the atmosphere, they do a peer-to-peer -peer network. So they're basically signaling each other directly. Right. Then when, when something is detected, they'll, they'll, they'll redirect downwards. Mm -hmm. so that's the dynamic network. That's uh, type three Sears in the buildings. But then there appears to be a ground-based network. So these spheres are actually controlled from the ground up. Okay. So places like Skinwalker are like a hub. It's like a data so hub. It's like a data hub, right? That's data. Put, wow. So what's happening is when they're doing the tests at Skinwalker, they're picking up gamma rays and microwaves, right? Which are moving around the site, which is exactly what these things would do. Because they're moving and they're yeah. and they're going bouncing down and they're bouncing back up, right? That's right. Wow, that's right. So that's why they that's can all, never triangulate it. That's right, and that's why also they 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 get upset when they start digging away at the earth because the ground itself is is masking the electronic signatures. Oh, so you're disturbing the cover. That's right. The the uh, the shield. That's right. Ah, Patrick, genius stuff. <laughs> so that's what it is. That's, that's what that's what it is. Uh, and the thing is, is that these these seers they they could they've got amazing camouflage techniques. So they they can literally be two feet in front of you, and you can't, can't see, see them. them. But they do have other things, as in they also can produce like a black mass effect. So they're just like a big, they look like a big shadow that's non-reflective. So depending on what I think what mode they're in or how what they're doing at the time, they will use camouflage in a different way. And that's why at Skinwalker they they. They, they set things up and it all goes wrong because they're watching them. It's just they can't see them. Um, so they're right there. You just visually can't see it. They're right there. Wow. Wow. So they know they can, they could jam it, but just shoot gamma rays at it or whatever and just disrupt all the tech yeah. that they want to do. That's amazing. So I can, I, can, I can go a little bit further. Is So what appears to be happening is that uh, also, also I got images from Skinwalker where all these spheres, spheres are coming out of the ground. And then there's an, another image of what looks to be a smoke trail in the distance. So what's happening is these things are going up, intercepting something, and it's coming down and hitting the ground. Whatever they shot. So then what happens whatever, is... Whatever is they, they took down. They shot shooting down. Yeah. So what I, what I kind of think is happening is that groups are being inserted into these areas, as in ET groups, who then go and find these other groups that have landed or crash landed, and then they extract them out. Wow. So, the, so they're, they're, they're kind of putting them in a spot where somebody else or something else can grab them and pull them, pull, pull out the wreckage of whatever. That's right. Down. That's what it appears to be. Yeah. And then every once in a while, we'll get our hands on them. Every once in a while, there'll be a, something that happens yeah. that we, we get their hand, we, we get, you know, a crash retrieval we'll, we'll get some of these things that happens and and what's what's happening with the U, the u.s navy because they see the tiktok a lot flying around right what they call yep. the tiktok tiktok yep. that's tiktok yeah um what that appears to be is like a retrieval unit so when it's over when when the, the spheres shoot down a craft over the sea or disable it you'll fall into the ocean mm -hmm. then this thing will go in kind of repair it and then it'll send it on its way, because that's what the um, the air crews kind of reported. Right they over the said, water, right? It was like yeah. running over the water. Right? It was it was just under the water, and this thing was going all around it, like scanning it. Mm -hmm. And then when they came back, both had gone. So that means it's probably doing some sort of diagnostic, to then send it on its way. So, like, you think that Tic Tac is repairing the craft that got shut down by the, the, the spheres? Or, or been disabled by them, yeah. Right. It's kind so, of like this is a warning shot. You're on the floor now. Leave, kind of thing. 
Wow. So fix your shit and get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's what it appears to be. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, and if we can get our noses in the, in, in the between, that's where the, you know, the, the Navy or whoever else can get in there and, and pull it out. And then we can try to dissect it and re-engineer it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what appears to be going on. And, and that's, and that's what the Congress were talking about the other day. They're seeing this, these two fires, um, you know, basically near the aircraft, the fire aircraft. Uh, and that's what's going on with the, um, the one that was hovering by the ship. You know that there's a bit of footage in the group yeah. uh, where you see this, like that's the type three, right? This is hovering just next to the, the ship. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, well, why is it doing it? It's because there's stuff going on directly above the ship. So it's protecting. So it's protecting the ship. It's amazing. It's amazing. So we have, we have a, potentially we have a, and I'm just going to say it, an extraterrestrial force or an extra dimensional, whatever we have, we have something that's not native. I don't know. Maybe it is native, right? Maybe it's built huh. into the earth, but there's something not man-made. It could be man-made. I don't know, hmm. but there's <laughs> some, there's some type of for there's some type of entity that are using orbs in three different sizes from 80,000 feet down to house levels that are flying around. And when they're in your house, it's a haunted house. And these things are coming out when they need to be. And mm -hmm. they're, inter they're intercepting cigars, crafts. They're intercepting other craft in the air. And they're disabling it and shooting them down. We have another phenomenon, which would probably be this Tic Tac thing that comes and repairs the, the craft mm -hmm. that's been shot down and it leaves. And that's all right. this is going on around us all the time. And we think it's ghosts. We think it's UFOs. We think it's aliens. Mm -hmm. We think it's all this stuff. But it's happening all the time around us. And we're just kind of like barely privy to it that's right yeah i love it <laughs> <laughs> it, to me it makes the most sense of it out of, out of most things i've heard you know i, I well I would, I would really like to know like here, here's what gets me is when you get to when you get to things like this and this is on your facebook page here and i want to pop it up is when you get to this yes so now you got potentially jesus yes potentially God or whoever, but this looks, there's a triangle above this guy's head. So I'm going to guess that's Hermes, Trismegistus. <laughs> but you got a piece stub or something in between here and, and you got an orb with two spheres coming out of it. Cause that's not the earth. There's a nodule here and there's a light coming off of here and you got some cherubs looking on. I mean, like this has probably been going on forever. And if you look closely, there's a seal between the two halves and right that matches the one that um, we have. It's amazing. So that so the big one, the one that that's on in in text or wherever it's at, uh, this this has a um, as a, a seal, a, yeah, a Pretty seal possible. around the bottom of it. Well, let me pull up that picture again. That uh, we get the middle of it, maybe. I know it's in here. Here it is. Yeah, that's yeah. Is that the reflection right, yeah. from the? No, the no, no. That's that's the seal. Oh, so that's not the reflection from the uh, the, uh -huh. the steel there. To me, that's oh, what it might looks be. like. Yeah, it might be. But there is a, there is a, like a oh, steel oh. bit around it. Okay, that's maybe a... here, maybe here. Yeah, it could be. Wow, Patrick, you've done some amazing work, man. I can't wait to dig into your book. I can't wait to like dig into this further. I can't wait to try to hook you up with Brandon or, or that team or, or something over there to see if we can get, you know get some kind of of uh, data. I know some I know some people in Texas um you know be awesome Brandon, Brandon, brandon's interesting um there's a picture that actually there's two things i should, I should mention is is a you know robert bigelow yeah there's a tweet he did i think it was from his aerospace company saying our little con con contribution do you remember oh, that one yeah yeah with the little the the orb floating around inside of the sealed yeah. thing and then take and take it off yeah, yeah that's the type three wow that's amazing. But, and so Bigelow knows all about this, but he's probably doesn't want to talk about it. But, oh, yeah. but he knows uh, he does know about this. Uh, I don't know if Brandon does. But, but if, has anybody tried to capture these things? I mean, it, it, like at these locations, I mean, we it, it, if all the data works out, we have the map. We know where they're going. We know where the mm -hmm. most things are. You've got an app that can... Um, instigate them <laughs> that's the best word i can come up with yeah, and yeah. instigate them but has anybody tried to do this to snag them theoretically it's possible i mean theoretically you'd have to get it into like a faraday cage 
mm-hmm. a very good Faraday cage and, and close the door or something like that. That's what's one way of doing it. Just so they have uh, no other outside communication. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right in but I mean, in fact, I'll tell you an interesting, something interesting as well is if all these people who have like poltergeist activity in their houses and they're feeling, you know, and they can't deal with it, all you have to do is shield your house. Like if you have a bed, yeah, have like a shielding around it and suddenly it'll all stop or it'll minimize down to a livable levels. It's that simple. So, so shit like Faraday cage shield, right? So you're talking like... Yeah. Because all it's in- doing is it is, is, is performing actions to get, to get you into a safe area. But if you're already in a safe area, just put yourself in a Faraday cage and jobs a gun. That's it. And then you can live there. Wow. So if you straight you wrapped your house in copper <laughs> or, <laughs> or, you know, or, or something, right? I mean, at that point you'd have that to, might die. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the theory it would work. Yeah. Um, and if, if you really want to get rid of quality guys activity in, your, in the in buildings, you have to disrupt the network because what happens is, is that when the communications are going and there's too much disruption and it can't get the signaling through, you'll say, well, this place is too noisy. We'll move somewhere else. And this is why um, you might know yourself that if a house becomes active, other houses in the area also become a little active as well. So you've been an IC guy, you would understand about load balancing, right? Yeah. yeah. So what you're doing is you're putting one sphere in there and then if, if there's too much noise in there, it will route it to the next one and then the next one. And that's and so you have a house that's probably one sitting in, but no one, no one knows about it, it doesn't do anything. But maybe once a year, it will send it will signal. And then it just fires it up down the line. Right? Yeah, that's right. It's basically a transponder. It's the same that's thing. It. So it would just come online when it needs to come online and shuts down again. Um, and, and that's it. Wow. So these things are everywhere all the time. They're literally yeah. everywhere. <laughs> literally all everywhere. The time. They could be yeah. right here. Like yes. Could, and they're all over all the time. And when they need to, they activate and they come up. And that's right. they don't want to hurt us. So they tell us to get away. That's they right. They scare us that they'll do something to, to attract our attention so that they can do their relay, they can do out, but they're also protected. That's right. There's an interesting picture uh, I can show you. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, the, 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 I forget what it's called, the Pentagon, you know, the, the thing they, they say the devil, it's like, like an inverted oh, triangle. Pen- pentagram, right. Pentagram, that's right. If you look in my group, there is mm-hmm. a, a picture uh, that will probably, probably make sense. Oh, yeah. Hold on a minute. I think I just found it. Right here. This one, yeah. So what do you have? You have a sphere with a triangle on it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, if you look at the next picture along, which is a bet sphere. Oh. No, probably not that one. Probably, uh, ah. it's got a triangle on it. Am I, am Little I triangle. Used... Oh. This one? No, no, no. Go back. Uh, sorry. So, so it's that one there, the silver ball. That one, that one. Here? See the, see the edge? See the slight edge? See the triangle? Right here? Yeah. So it's right. You can see the edge. Uh, I don't know if I can control the mouse. Yeah, yeah. Let me see here. Let me uh, give you control. Uh, I control it. Uh, I love technology, don't you? <laughs> see. Um, let's see if I can annotate remote control. Uh, there you go. Did you give a request? Yeah, I got it. Got it now. You see my move, my mouse moving. I don't. How about now? There it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There it is. It's a triangle. So this is another thing is, you know, when people say they have haunted objects. Mm-hmm. Like dolls yeah. and whatever else. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> what's happening, I, I think, or how it models out is these things are using a very exotic propulsion system. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a radioactive byproduct that contaminated objects. Right. So what happens is, is that 
if this is in a building and it's there for say 50 years and, and there's like a bed in the room or, or whatever, that object is soaked up a degree of this radiation. When the object is then moved to another location, the surrounding spheres can detect it in the same way our own drones can detect nuclear signatures on the ground. Mm -hmm. They will detect it and then they'll go in there and they'll say, they'll start performing actions around it to get rid of people. Mm. There, there's an example uh, in my book, uh, basically there's a family that bought a bed, uh, mm -hmm. a, a bunk bed, I think it was, for their kids. And they took it home and suddenly the room became silly, really active. And there were voices saying, we're going to kill you, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, real serious. And it scared the kids to death. So the parents went in the room as well. And the same thing was happening as well, that they were, they were having all these weird experiences around the bed. They got rid of the bed and it all stops. Literally the same day. Wow. Because it's gone. And when you think about it, that's exactly what we would do. Like if, if we went back in time and there was like a, a, a child with a, with a bar of you know, uh, with, uh, uranium and playing with it, but we can't talk their, their language. We can't show ourselves to them. We would do scarecrow-like tactics for, to her to drop it and move away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the same kind of thinking. Wow. Dude. There was um, another, there was a, a UK um, paranormal investigator here who took a, one of these objects home with her. And she says, oh, I feel really sick. And I've been in bed for like, you know, a week or four days and I've got no energy. And then once I got rid of this haunted object, I'm back to normal again. I feel great. Well, if it's radioactive, it's killing her blood cells. Yeah. So, and, it's, and then when she gets rid of it, she comes, comes back to normal again. Amazing. And this is the hitchhiker effect. Uh, hey, there it is. Wow. There's people sense. who have who have taken stones off the driveway at 30 East Drive and they send them back in the post with a with a letter of apology because their house becomes active. Wow. Because the stone is contaminated with this radiation. <laughs> it's and this is why paranormal activity follows you home. It doesn't matter how complicated your journey is, it follows you home because it's giving off a signal, giving off this emission. You've picked up something that is. Wow. Doing the signal. So it makes yeah, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, so it doesn't matter that it's, it's the person, the person that's there and you go to Skinwalker Ranch, right? And you then you go back to DC and then stuff follows you home and then you see werewolves in the backyard or. Yeah. Whatever, you might, right? you'll, in, in the same way dust can be contaminated with radiation, maybe this, the, the, the dust there is contaminated. And so it gets from their clothes, they go home, it gets knocked around, goes in the wash, gets on other clothes, other people wear it, it spreads around like that. Or you breathe it in. Yeah. It comes part of you. You cough. Yeah. The neighbors get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that's how, and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Patrick. This has been awesome, man. Thank you so much for doing this. And thanks for coming on and talking to me and I'll tell everybody, go buy your book, go check out your website, go check out yep. uh, your Facebook page is full of amazing stuff. And, uh, this is not going to be the first, like the last time we talk, we're going to do this a lot. We're going to, we're going to hang out and, uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of it and do, thank you very much for doing all this work and spend mm -hmm. your own money and time. And you're getting closer to, uh, uh to this than, and I think you even realize, man, and I hope, hopefully I can help you on the journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm, I'm always up for uh, extra bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'll be awesome. All right, cool. All right, then. Thanks. I'll um, speak to you next time, I guess. Thanks, Thanks dude. All right. All right. See you.